I got delivered from demons. Bet you didn't know that. Ah, so did everybody else here. And I wonder, did you get delivered from demons too? Well, we're going to share some testimonies. So let's talk about it. What's going on, that Supernatural Talk family? We're about to get into some good stuff today. But let me tell you, this is episode number eight. Come on, man. We're eight episodes in. Glory to God. We're moving. We're growing. And God is showing. And we be knowing because we're Holy Ghost flowing. Amen. Amen. So good to be here with you guys on episode eight. I got my co-host with me. Glory boy number one. We call that man Isaiah's Pooch Poche is in the house. What's going on, baby? What's up, man of God? What's up, man of God? What's up, man of God? Yeah. yeah, episode eight, we made it. Your, your editing skills are wonderful, wonderful. Shakara ba, man of God, by your grace. Shakara ba. Fun, fun fact, man of God. Yeah. Apostle Daniel Adams taught Isaiah's Poche how to edit. Fun fact. And now he's uh he's out editing me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, and now we got Glory Boy number two. We got Fido Coos. If you see, if you see the behind the scenes, you'll be able to understand. So that's why you should definitely uh, become a member here on the channel just to see the behind behind the scenes content because it is funny. But Glory Boy number two, Fido Coos, what's good? Or Keegs Ice, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So blessed to be here. This is a great. Come on, give give them something better, man. They miss you. They miss me. Guys, do you miss do you miss him? R- really, let us know in the comments. Do you miss him? Yes. Every week, you got to wait for him to come back. Comment down below and become a member. It would, it would make me feel so much happier. I think he uh, I think he's still stressing about this table situation from earlier. So we have a new setup, as you guys can tell. I, I would show you on the wide angle, but. Uh, we got to change some things you know, camera wise in the future for the future episodes. But he bought a table and then we couldn't put the mics on it. And this man threw a deliverance fit. I mean, it was crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> no, it's just, guys, if you if you look and you'll be able to see in the future, this podcast setup was thought meticulously. No, there it's are fire. Hours, there are hours spent. It's fire for sure. Everything from the textures to the colors to the de- it's all in the details mm. and everything that i that that we purchased for this podcast setup was all centered around a table yeah. and it's a beautiful beautiful table and it's just sitting over there and inside. it's just sitting over here now but don't worry we're gonna figure out a way to by get the way you're here. thinking and i think isaiah would agree you could have built the temple of solomon man I, I'm just when it comes to to design and details. Things, I, I I'm it's all about the details. The cubits, like even like like the the yeah the gold lining. Yep. Even the trees that come straight from Saudi Arabia. Exactly. I just rebuked that. I didn't tell the truth on that one, guys. Forgive me, but it was just funny. But the no. trees, man, they're they're, they're nice. They're I nice. think a lot of stuff. There's from Thailand, Mexico. Yeah. Isaiah is trying to low key not laugh. <laughs> no, it's for no, for real. I, some of the stuff I bought really? it says where it's from in Home Goods. Oh wow! Yeah, it says it says where it's from. Home Goods is Christian, right? I don't know about that. There's I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. I don't, if yeah. I if I'm wrong, guys, forgive me. Yeah, that's uh, Hobby Lobby. Oh yeah, Hobby Lobby. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. Hobby Lobby. I could spend I, don't, I could spend hours in Hobby Lobby. Really? Yeah, man. So your house is going to be decked out. And G- yeah, prophesy in Jesus' okay. name. Okay. Right now, it's not, but. All right. So that's a good opener for you guys. Let you know what, what's going on. with You know, when you come on these episodes, we've gone through most of the day. We're recording here at night. So Coogs has had a lot. So he's just, he's ready to debrief and debunk and whatever he needs to do. <laughs> whatever he needs to do. Cry myself to sleep. Yeah, whatever he has to do it's at great. night because he's just went throughout the day and dealt with all kinds of stuff. But you know what? We love the glory boys. Amen. So okay. we're going to jump into this topic, guys. Today, we're going to share deliverance testimonies. You know, last podcast, we talked about ways demons entered, but I was like, you know what? Let us share a little bit about our life. You can get to know us a little bit. Uh, you know, deliverance is part of my testimony, you know? First of all, when you get saved by Jesus Christ, you get your spirit definitely gets delivered, meaning that you become one with Christ by the Holy Spirit. You, you, you get born again. 
Okay. You have a born again experience and, you know, some people have them one shots on the spot where they get fully set free. And then other people, you know, with over time with revelation, they get set free as the Lord shows them things. That was the case with me as I've been on my journey. Um, I've had so many times of deliverance and I'm going to share probably one or two of those testimonies with you guys. Um, if you guys don't know, I come through a broke, come from a broken family. So I instantly coming from a broken family, coming from abandonment, rejection, you know, uh, dealing with the hurt and pain of mommy and daddy not being together, not having that wholeness, that fullness, that dynamic, you know, especially here in America. One of the big cultural things is, is we like to have a strong home foundation. You know, the American dream is husband, wife, kids, nice house, job, and then retirement and then fly out into the sunset. That's what they kind of built here. Well, that's not what we live by, but that's what's presented to us. So when you don't grow up in that uh, strong foundational family thing that's presented also by the Bible, mom and dad in the home, you know, even Jewish tradition is very strong on that too. Mm -hmm. Family is everything, you know? So I didn't have that and nobody taught me about marriage, taught me about family. So I was, I was definitely demonized, definitely Mm -hmm. demonized. And as I walked through life and I had my journey, you know, I used to suffer very strong with anger. Uh, I used to be set off really fast. And um, I used to be a cage fighter, try to, you know, subdue some of that. I had I had had mommy, daddy issues. You know, I, I had all kinds of issues. You, is, you got an issue, I probably had it to an extent, you know. Um, suffered with lust, drugs, uh, trying to be the boss when I wasn't ready to be the boss. <laughs> I think I did all that. But I say all this to say, to lead you up to uh, one of the deliverance moments. So, you know, as I struggled through life, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and I started to move in the power of God. But just because you move in the power of God doesn't mean that you can't go through deliverance. Okay. Doesn't mean that as you're moving in the power of God, you know, you're not in the, you're also in the refining fire. So the fire of God is there as you're moving in the power of God and things that aren't supposed to be there become revealed. So God can take you from glory to glory and from faith to faith, right? So as I'm moving in the power of God, I'm seeing people healed, delivered, saved, you name it, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, things in my life that aren't supposed to be there, they start to surface. So over time, I start going through layers of deliverance. As the Holy Spirit will highlight something to me and I have to handle it. Like one time I was uh, listening to my pastor at the time he was preaching a message and he said, you need to forgive your parents. And the Holy Spirit was very strong on me. He's like, you need to forgive your parents. I ran right to my car. I called my dad. I talked to him about some stuff. And he talked to me about some stuff. And I was in tears. And, you know, that's a level of deliverance right there. Mm -hmm. Because if you hold unforgiveness, you get messed up. That's the beautiful thing about the word is it brings revelation. Mm. And it'll set you free. Amen. So, you know, that happened. Man, what what if I I had so so my pastor was preaching. That happened to me. Um. One time while I was preaching the word, I noticed that I would get this, con- like, not a little nerve. It wasn't a nervous cough. I mean, this thing was like, uh, 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 a lot, right? While I'm preaching, the Holy Spirit gave me revelation that the anointing is there and something inside of me is trying to get expelled. So I said one day when I was, when I was in the middle of preaching, now this is after I come out of a backslidden season, by the way, and I'm, I'm coming back up. I tell my wife, Heather, I said, we got to go to the car. So I go to the car with Heather and I said, you need to lay hands on me right now. The Holy Spirit has showed me that there's something that needs to come out. And it was that spirit of rage and anger that had been in my life. It had, I'd, I'd went through a broken season, a humbling season. And so it had come to the surface. And I'm telling you, when Heather laid hands on me, she'll tell you she got freaked out. And I got, you know, that thing was coming out in yells like, you know, and after I got set free from that, as you can tell, I don't really suffer with strong, angry outbursts. I don't, I don't get overly like, you know, now when I'm in boss mode, that's one thing. When I'm in like, you got to be the boss and you got to get people straight, but that's not anger. That's called being authoritative. But I used to deal with that anger stuff. And when that left, meaning I would like hurt people's feelings and, or I'd want to fight. People would come up to me and I'd want to fight. I'd even get into like, I have to let my my 
word be known. But now what it is, I, I can I have self-control. That's another area. If you ain't got self-control in an area of your life, you're demonized in the area. Wow. So I That's had self-control. Deep. Yeah. And, and I, I was able to control anger. Mm. I'm th- not talking about righteous anger. You can be righteously angry. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about anger that hurts people, you know? And I'll tell you another time, and I'll let you guys share some of your testimonies. There was another time I was uh, coming, I had come out of that season and I was living in an apartment at the time, right? And um, I was recording a video. I was actually doing a Zoom deliverance session. I go back. No, I wasn't doing a Zoom deliverance session. I was doing a teaching. And I go back before I'm about to upload the teaching. And as I am looking at the video, I see myself go, like that. And I said, oh, no. I said, this ain't good, man. Y'all should see Keegan's eyes right now. He's looking at me. He's looking at me crazy. <laughs> but I'm, 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 I'm he's into it, yeah, because I, I don't do this much. So I'm, I'm, I'm sharing testimonies yeah. now, right? So I'm sitting in front of the computer. I saw the wiggle, and it, immediately I heard Python spirit. And I said, this is the spirit that has been restricting me from having breakthrough. Mm-hmm. So Isaiah met me when I was living in that capacity, right? I, I believe so. Did yes, you sir. did you meet me cuz you came to did you come to my my apartment? Yeah, I did. You came into my apartment. Yeah, I think I think that happened maybe like a week after I walked into your apartment for the first time. Wow. Mm-hmm. So I was living very humbly. Amen. And remember I was driving a little black car? Yeah, the Honda the Ford, the Ford of Focus almost so Ford uh, something. Yeah. It was hybrid, it was like a hybrid. Yeah, hybrid. See, ah, what is that thing called? Fiesta, Fiesta? No, 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 no. It was a Ford C Max. C Max. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I for- hey, Coogs, I forgot that Isaiah has seen me from really humble beginnings, man. Mm. That's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. You saw me go from my apartment to my other house to this one. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, nobody can tell you. You, you, you can tell everybody where Daniel Adams came from. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. That's crazy. I forgot Isaiah. Isaiah's been with me for a minute, man. And you've also seen the grace of God and the expansion of God. I've also seen the stewardship. Stewardship. Amen. The expansion by the grace of God. So, yeah, man. So I was standing in front of that. I say all this to because this is probably the spirit that was restricting me the most. Me and that thing got into a fight, man. I come out from behind the computer and I spoke in the realm of the spirit. And I said, let me tell you something, you little serpent. I said, you got caught. You just exposed yourself on camera. Now I'm doing self-deliverance, right? I said, you unclean spirit that came through immorality or wherever you have come from in my life, I command you to let me go now. When I said that, man, it was full on. It was like, ah, it was crazy, man. I'm sitting there like, ah, and like, and, and it's like me and this thing, I'm like fighting a snake, but the snake ain't there, but the snake is in there. You know what I'm saying? And then- yeah. I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, come out of me, now. you know, and that thing's like, <laughs> and wow. and then all of a sudden, like, I'm snotting, I'm crying, I'm gagging, and then I'm free. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just free. It was like, oh, oh. and I saw the light, man. Absolutely wild. Wow. Absolutely wild. I noticed it though. I have. I see. I will say this, by the grace of God, God's given me this eagle vision. To, when I look at people, I can catch the demonic in them, that discernment. I just mm. can see it. I catch it in their mannerisms and stuff. And it's the same thing with me. Yeah. I can even look at myself because you got to understand it's the Holy Spirit in you mm. and your flesh. When your flesh ain't submitted, it ain't, it ain't lining up. You'll even catch yourself because the spirit is stronger than the flesh. Yeah. So that's how you know it's the spirit of the Lord. It's so right. spiritual. It's wild. Right. Mm. It, it, you know? That's happened to me before. Yeah. So like... You know, you look in the mirror and you know it ain't you looking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I got free from that and prosperity started to come into my life. Wow. You know, when I was dealing with the spirit of rejection, I was in rebellion. I was dealing with rebellion and rejection. I had rebellious and rejected people around me all the time. So here's another truth I'll tell you guys. Whatever spirit you're dealing with, you're going to attract those type of people. Mm -hmm. You're going to attract people that love what you love. It's true. It's a spiritual wow. thing. I, you know, it's like birds of a feather flock true. together. Yeah, yeah it is true. true. So, you know, and sometimes God will bring people around that struggle with things that you've defeated so you can set them free. So there's that that aspect also. But um, there was one more time I want to tell you guys. One time I was in my room and in the apartment I was telling Isaiah about, 
Um, I was in the bedroom and nobody was there. Heather was at work at, uh, she, when she was a waitress. And I was in the room and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Daniel, the reason you're not able to maintain and hold on to anything is because of a family curse. Wow. And if I looked back, I saw that pe- my family had a lot, but they lost it, have a lot and lose it. Mm-hmm. Stores, farms, you know, they work yeah. hard to keep it and then they just lose it. Wow. So I, I, I got revelation from the Holy Spirit and he told me, he said, uh, Daniel, you need to break this curse. I break this generational curse that's on my my father's bloodline. Right after that, a demon comes out. So I said, I break it and it was like, and then it's like gone. Wow. And then right after that, TSNL went, started to flourish, started to grow. Right after that, curse was broken. Yep. Wow. So I'm a big advocate of deliverance because I'm a testament of deliverance. And I'm, te- I'm a testament of multiple deliverances in my life. Mm. Multiple deliverances. So, you know, if you notice something ain't lining up, something ain't happening, guys, um, reach out to the Holy Spirit. Make a phone call. He'll answer and he'll set you free. But that's just some of my deliverance testimony. And I love that we're doing this podcast because I can share these type of testimonies with you guys. And I believe as you're hearing these testimonies, even the Holy Spirit's coming up on you now as you're listening and you're getting to receive freedom because the anointing has no limitations. And the testimony is the testimony of Jesus. And it's a testimony of victory. Thank you, Jesus. So you're getting set free as you listen to this podcast, listeners. Freedom is in your ears. It's going into your soul, and you're being let free from all demonic control. And that goes for you guys watching, too, right now on YouTube. So, And, and comment down below, too, if you guys yeah. do get freedom during this podcast. We'd love to interact with you guys in the comments. Or if the Holy Spirit gave you revelation about something on mm-hmm. your family bloodline or something that you've noticed in your life, definitely comment down below so we can talk about it. In Jesus' name, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to Isaiah's first, but I want to tell you guys, I've seen Isaiah's have a few deliverance moments, and I've actually seen him change after some of these moments of deliverance. Honestly, I'm going to be transparent with you. I thought some of it was goofy, and I didn't think it was serious. Mm-hmm. When I'd see you, I'd say, oh, this guy's just... Like, like what? So give I me, had some doubt me, there. Like we were outside of uh, Bay Ridge Sushi oh, one day. Oh, my gosh. And, and that I was doing. I genuinely. Yeah, it was a genuine thing. Yeah. yeah, and you had sushi all over the ground. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like we went yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You took me to. Yeah. That yeah. place was fire. It was yeah. fire. So I now everybody's the, gonna yeah. visit that place. I actually love the owner there. She's really cool. Me and her know each other. I've not been going there since 2013. It's about an hour and some change from me now, though. Yeah. But Isaiah is in the parking lot. I forget exactly what it was. We just ate sushi, man. We're chilling, and all of the shrimp tempura. I was just playing. He don't even eat shrimp. <laughs> It's probably insider, spicy tuna. Inside right there. Yeah, all that salmon, that tuna. I think there was even like um like banana ice Yeah, cream whatever was on that thing, man, it was out. So I'm like, you just all that money. <laughs> and this dude used to eat like six rolls, man. Oh my what? Goodness. It's probably like four. Probably four. Low key four. Four. All right, high key five. High key five. <laughs> high key five. Man, I got like Three. Because he, three. I, listen, no, Isaiah's eats. Trust yeah. me, oh. Isaiah's no, but I see, eats. No, not like he, let, let me tell no, you, though. Isaiah's eats. No, no, no. Let me tell you, right, guys. This is why I love this podcast. Oh, thank Jesus that He's letting us do this podcast. This is beautiful. I love this podcast. I really do because we yeah, can really too. be us and talk. Isaiah's was our hand me off guy. Oh, this so is facts. yeah, there was a season in ministry. We would just not eat and we like everybody, even pastors and people when we were we give the food to Isaiah's. Cause he used to be like, You gonna eat that man of God? Okay. All right. Garbage disposal. Hold, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on though. But we used to eat out all the time. We did. So we ate three course meals ev- every single day. Spending unnecessary money. Every single Talk day. Talk about deliverance. We needed deliverance from gluttony. We, man. We, we we ate like barbarians. It was like the preaching traveling, traveling preacher problem. It, <sighs> To, to, but to the extreme. And yeah. and at the time, I, I wasn't rolling in dope cash money bread. You know, I, I wasn't. I <laughs> but wasn't, you were rolling in dough, though. That's for I sure. I was rolling in dough, though. <laughs> that, was, that was a bar. I was rolling in dough, though, for real. And to save money, I would be like, hey. no." And uh, wait, and to, to clarify this, too, no one would finish their food. So e- either way, like, it's either they, they get thrown away and we got people dying in Africa or, like, I eat the food I and it goes, you, you know, it goes to a good place, you know. It's a seed. 
it's a seed, you know. Being hey, so. I'm in that left. I'm in the season of leftovers right now too. Oh, receiving partition. I I ate some leftovers today. Yeah, <laughs> dinner, yeah. And they gave me some of her pizza. Oh, oh that wasn't leftover. That was grade A cauliflower no, was, crust. That good was, stuff, that was bro. Fire. That you was that so that I was, was good stuff. Yeah, I was blessed. That ain't that isn't really leftovers. That's like still still Those good. Are blessed overs. That blessed overs. That's, it was a blessed over. But anyway, Man. so Isaiah yes, sir. was in the parking lot and he did that. But <laughs> yeah, so there's one the deliverance street. testimony of Isaiah. But go ahead. Tell, tell us a little bit. Give me give me one good testimony that you know of that after you got delivered, you have seen the benefits of it. You have seen the benefits of it. And, and not the not the ones talking about all those females that used to come around that when you were thinking everybody was your wife. <laughs> Cause you got delivered from that too, man. I, look at I, praise God, he got delivered from that, man. He look. Let me say this too. I got. I, I give Keegan a hard time. I got to give Isaiah a hard time. This guy has had so many women tell him he's in their dreams and that they're his husband. Man of God, can we not do this? On, oh on my phone? goodness! Talk about it. Talk, All right, let's, talk about it. Let's, it. let's talk about it. Right, Keegan, let's talk yeah, about Keegan it. enjoys that. Let's talk, talk about, about it. Let's but talk I can it. tell y'all why. I can talk tell y'all why. Because in his past, and this goes for all of us and everybody watching, if you look at strange things on the internet, strange things will find you in public. Preach, my God. That's all that's I'm going to tell you. Facts. Preach, my God. That's facts. I'm telling you, man. Preach, my God. All right. Are we done talking about it already? That's it? That's it? Let's keep going. Isaiah, why is Isaiah's always... What? Like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Saying, y'all, like, y'all want to bring up these, 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 you know, women of Keegan, God. Keegan, wasn't there like wanna, a five foot three woman that wanted to marry you at one exactly. time? Exactly. Talk about it. Who? <laughs> Why are you? Like, you Who's know five who foot three? About. You don't remember? Five foot three. I know someone five foot three tries to get on Keeks. Yeah. What? We'll yeah. talk. We'll talk about yeah, it. We'll later, talk. We'll talk yeah, about yeah, it. We'll talk about it. No, no, no. There's some cruise stuff, man. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. Yeah, talk later. I, I don't. I, 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 it's not because I got like, a so lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I'm like, I'm like who's the five foot know. three woman? Like, all right, we'll, we'll call it five three. We'll call it five three. We'll call it five three. We'll five three. We'll talk. And we'll nothing. Talk. No. Hey, no harm to five three people at all. At all whatsoever. But this is actually. a special occasion we're talking about. Amen. So go ahead. I let's talk about that. Okay. Okay. I I think I've told you this story before, but um, it was right around the time when I had that encounter with God, and um, I remember. I just had this encounter with God. And this is how I knew that I was super stubborn. But I just had this encounter with God. And I still went back to my homie's crib to smoke, right? To smoke to smoke the green. But it was like a completely different experience. You know, the Bible says you can't come in contact with God and say the same. So I had this encounter with God. I thought I could still, you know, do my thing. And it was horrible. And I ran home. And I was like, I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I need prayer. Or she starts praying for me. This is this, I've never had deliverance before. I didn't know what demons were. I didn't know about deliverance. I just knew that I just knew that prayer was a real thing, right? And that it worked. That's all I knew. She starts to pray for me, and while she's praying for me, I start feeling this this deep feeling to like like convulse, and I'm like, "What the heck?" And I'm like, "Yo, this is crazy." And I run straight to the sink, and I start like throwing these like eggs up. It was like eggs. It was literally eggs. And before this moment, I was taking a bunch of drugs. I was taking like acid, cocaine, all this, all the different drugs, all hard drugs. And um, I started throwing these things up. And as I'm throwing these things up, I'm like feeling stuff leave me. Like as if like there was things, people in me. It was wild. And it starts coming up. And these eggs are like black. And I should have took a picture. And to this day, I'm like, I should have took a picture. Because like you would see this and you'd be like, this is like from outer space or something, or like some tar, or like black tar, and after that moment, I never had a desire to to smoke, to to do cocaine, to do acid, and um, I've been sober for, for since that day, so. I don't that's know, after your mom prayed for you. That's after my mom prayed for me, so that's like that's almost four years now, three, 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 I, actually it could have been four years, no, no, three and a half years, three and a half years, yeah, mm-hmm. but that's, that, that was like one like crazy moment of deliverance and I have another one when I was depressed and I, my mom prayed can I just real quick real quick real quick yeah, go ahead. I was going I was going to school at UCF I was studying data, data analysis and visualization it was like this 24 week boot camp and um I'm saved you know I'm loving the Lord but like I had this like heaviness on me like this depression 
I don't know why I was so sad. I'm like, why am I so sad? I'm like, I'm going through the motions. And I'm like, bro, what's like, why do I feel like, like, I just want to like not be here anymore. It was just weird. It was random. I had no reason for that, you know? And I come home and I tell my mom and my mom, and she's a prayer warrior. Shout out to my mom. I love you, ma. Si está viendo esto. I love you. Bless you, ma. But she starts praying for me. And like, I'm like sad. Man. Like, I'm like depressed. And I just start busting out laughing. Like laughing, like laughing. I'm talking about hardcore laughing. And I couldn't stop laughing. And and the presence of God came into the room so hard that my mom started crying mm -hmm. under the presence of God because the Lord was in the room. And I'm like, I'm laughing so hard as if like I had like laughing gas. And my mom is like bawling in tears because of the glory of God on her. And that was just crazy. I, I, it's just mind blowing that that happened. But those are two solid times that I remember very vividly. That um the Lord literally delivered me. I physically saw something happen. And then after there was an immediate response and effect in my body. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love deliverance, man. And I know his mom. She is a pastora. Amen. She she has a beautiful spirit and she loves the Lord Jesus for sure. And he is a walking testament because of her love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um one thing that he did get delivered from was tight shirt syndrome. Ah, uh, that's deep. Yeah, he did. When he came and first met me, <laughs> this guy. I got to tell y'all. The, the apostle, the apostle, the apostle. No, this is good. Bring the fire, man. <clears> it keeps us humble. Bring the fire, yes, yes. He comes with his Bible. Man, it was the cutest thing in the world. Honestly, it was. He comes with his little Bible, and he's got his tight shirt. He's got his beard because he's feeling manly. This is about 2021. 2021? Yeah, yeah. About 2021, Yeah. He comes up and he says, man of God. It's like, he said, I saw a whole lion in your face. I, I really did though. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I really did. I, but I'm, but why he's saying that, I'm literally looking at him and I'm saying, man, that shirt's struggling. <laughs> I remember, man, that was a button up. But you know what? He was still young. He's still young. 25, 24, 20. you're about 22, 21. I was 22 at the time. Oh, yeah, young man, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, he was just walking up there with his shirt, and that was the day. That's what I remember vividly about meeting you at first. And then mm. there was a prophetic guy there, and he told Isaiah these words. He said, do not leave this man's side. Mm. And it's been, he's been there ever since. Mm. It's been pretty crazy. I don't even know he knew what was happening in that moment. I did not. Not one bit. He got delivered into destiny. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Mm. I, I told you the story, right? How, like, I, would, I didn't have any, like, understanding about the prophetic or like spiritual mm. things like i knew about the bible i had that encounter with god that was like the most spiritual thing you know and besides like feeling the lord while you're praying but when i walked into your church at the time there's only like seven people like mm. eight people there was it was like this presence like this holy presence right and that's not even the beginning of it i actually started having visions like in the church i've never had that before like i'm worshiping and i'm like seeing jesus as like this like 80 foot being like sitting down on a, on this throne and I can only see his like shin down. You know what I'm saying? In the church, you know? And I'm like, this is crazy. And I'm getting like words of knowledge for people that I didn't even know what it was. And it happened the second I came in contact with you and I touched you. And I got friends that have testimonies of doing that. Like you walk, you talk to them on the phone, like T lives. You had a, you had a, like one conversation with T lives or you, or you had a, he makes a song for you. And next thing you know, he's meeting like high ranking principality demons at the gas station. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just crazy. Any like anytime someone's come in contact with you, the supernatural has to come with Explodes. them because it comes with you. Explodes. That's crazy. why we call it the supernatural life. It's by it's the crazy. grace and glory of God. It's called having an assignment and a purpose. And the purpose is to equip the saints and to wake people up. Amen. That's what we do. It's so wild. my job is when I, when I touch you, Jesus comes through. Amen. And you get ignited. For the glory of God. That's why you should become a forerunner. But that's a whole other conversation. Supernaturallife.org. Yeah. All right. I'm a <laughs> yes. Got you. It'll 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 change your life. It, it this will is change facts. your life. Uh, this life. deliverance will come right into your house and just start to mess up the whole family in a good way. Yeah. You'll get so set free. For real. So set free. Even uh I got to pray for a key. I prayed for your mom one time. And my grandma. My mamma. And mamma. You pray for my mom and mamma. Mamma my mamma was a little tough. Look how he talks about his mamma. Nah, he loves. Hey, he <laughs> loves his grandma, his grand, his papa, and his mamma. His mamma and papa. Yeah, Keegan. Keegan is the sweetest soul. And so, like, when he came into the ministry, 
I was like, this guy is one thing's have he's sweet, right? He's a sweet guy. He loves coffee. He loves aesthetics. You, you, when I went into the house the other day, he's playing his little music. I know he's just sitting there chilling out. He's the guy I could totally see you on the porch with coffee and a bunch of snow. And you're just happy with your nice little your thing. I just got you figured out, bro. It's all right. I don't know about the snow. No, nah, sure you'll be that. all right. You'll be all right. You're from Indiana, man. I'm talking more Christmas time because you just come okay. out. Okay. Indiana yeah. boy. <laughs> but anyway, he's a sweet guy. So I thought when he come in the ministry, first time I met him, I didn't know he's gonna I didn't have no idea the dude would be this close to me. He just he's he's in uh Wisconsin. Look, I have the first picture. I have the picture of the of the day we met. Oh my gosh. Yo. That's the day we met. Yo, you were crazy? smaller. Oh my gosh. What? A little bit, yeah. What? Yeah. Now you're muscular, bro. Yeah, I was skinnier oh, yeah. there. I was skinnier. You can see it a little bit. Sorry. Right. Look at this, man, man. Yo, this guy was skinnier. Yeah. You weren't eating. No, I wasn't eating. I didn't have money to eat. What'd you just say? <laughs> I wasn't eating. You, you didn't have money to eat. No, I, had, like, I had, was wow. eating like tuna packets and popcorn. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Man, you got a little muscle on you now. We got to keep, keep you growing, man. Hey, Amen. Now, yeah. I'm, now I'm growing. I'm growing. <laughs> that was almost two years ago. Crazy. That's crazy, man. That, look, time goes. That's why we got to impact people with the kingdom of God. Listen, yeah. so I, I, I meet him and he's giddy. He got hit with the power of God, prophesied him being an evangelist. And, and he's now he's in the ministry today, but I was a little worried for him because he's a sweet guy, right? And I'm a little bit of a tough boot camp guy every now and then. I trust me, I've, I think I've tested Keegan's character at every inch that I possibly can. That's facts. I don't think there's much more that can happen. And you know what? He's a soldier and he's made it so far. And you know what? He's loyal. I like it because he, he could have left. He could have left. You got to push buttons sometimes, see how far people will go. He, he tried to walk home one time, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the hot sauce stuff. That was tough. That was tough. <laughs> But I got a little special discipleship thing, you know. I'll be careful because, I mean, good gracious. There's nothing different than what the Bible wants us to do, okay? You just trust me. It's the refining fire. Yeah, I could tell y'all my disciple. Maybe we'll do discipleship podcast one time. Talking about I'll talk about my discipleship stories from being mentored in, in the ministry. But anyway, yeah, Keegan was there and he made it. But Keegan, now I saw your mom get a level of deliverance. Mm -hmm. I did. I saw your mom when I prayed for her in Indiana. Yeah. She got a little bit delivered when I yeah. when I laid hands on her mm -hmm. um, by the grace of God. But tell me a little bit about a uh, man. We've seen you get delivered. I've seen <laughs> you get delivered. Amen. I've seen other ministers deliver you. I think the whole team in TSNL saw you getting delivered. So anyway, talk a little bit about it, man. Tell me a testimony of your deliverance, and you know that something changed after you got delivered. Is it just one story? I can go two. <laughs> I have a lot. I've yeah. been delivered in the craziest places. I've been delivered in the ocean. Literally in the ocean. Nemo got, got you. Yep. Nemo got you. Oh, my God. Yeah, we, we, we have to be careful what we say. I was, yeah, I'll tell that story. Is that, that your origin one. story? Oh, my goodness. No, but I, yeah, the first time I got deliverance, well, I manifested, and so my friend sent me a YouTube video, and I didn't even know anything about deliverance, and I was working full-time on staff at a church, but I didn't know about deliverance, and um, one time this person came up to me who I worked with, and she was like, I, like, these demons screamed and came out of me and blah, 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 and like, I did this and this. I was like, in a three-hour deliverance session, I was like, what in the world are you talking about? Like, that's crazy. She's like, I had a curse, and I was like, what? Like, what, like, what is that? I, I, I blew it off. A few months later, my friend sent me a video, and I started manifesting in my bathroom, and I was like, what in the world is this? And I heard the demon speak, and it was Jezebel. And so I'm like researching, doing all these things, and I thought that Jezebel only was in women, you know. I, 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 I didn't even know who Jezebel was at the time, and so I came to see Apostle Daniel in Illinois. And uh, I got crazy deliverance. It felt like I was, it felt like I was getting, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, I was just like, it felt like I was being electrocuted. It was like the power of God was coming upon me. 
and I felt and I knew that something was happening something was crazy was going on and it just felt like I was getting electric like electrocuted like my whole body was just like tingling it was crazy um and that was the first time and I would say ever since then like just being so much more free and who I am as a man of God and my identity being free and more confident that was the biggest thing was being more confident was that um and yeah, just I've gotten so much deliverance and being in TSL. I've been delivered by you so many times by other people. My hub leader, I remember one time I was in my apartment. I lived alone and I locked myself in a closet and I got on a Zoom call with my hub leader. Shout out Jamie. And I was like, I want every demon out of me. And I was in that closet until like I woke up the next I, I like I fell asleep in the closet. Like I and I woke up the next morning. And I remember like, it was like demons were screaming out of me. Like, like it, it was crazy. It was crazy stuff. Um, and yeah, that was, that was a huge, huge thing. I even noticed like my physical health was way better. I didn't have as much stomach problems anymore. Like I had, I would have horrible stomach pains all the time. I'd always would be sick. I would have to take off work all the time. Cause I would always be sick. Mm. Horrible sinus issues, stomach pains, migraines, like all the time. It was crazy. It was crazy. Really? Yeah. And then uh, I just started coming to your revivals. And like it's like every single time I came to one of the revivals, I just felt more free. Like there were just times where I would just sit there and I would just like feel. This is the crazy thing is that like you can just be in an environment and you can get set free. Like mm -hmm. you can just be there. And so I just like was coming oh, everywhere you were going, Michigan, uh, Texas. I, I just was going everywhere. And it's like every single time I just felt the power of God and I just felt more and more free. And my life was changing from being depressed and suicidal and anxious and uh, struggling with, with, with lust. It, it just kept, I just kept feeling more free, more free, more free. And um, yeah, I went to another revival and, and I got delivered in the ocean. I just went out in the ocean because I, I, I had never been to, I had, I had never been to the Atlantic side of the ocean in Florida. And now I live here, which is funny. And I was out in the ocean and I started like mammon came out and greed came out and I started throwing up in the ocean. And then that was a huge thing because then my finances was like, it was crazy. I started, I, I started getting blessed. I didn't even have a job when I started traveling with you full time. I, because I, I was just like, I, but I had faith and literally like people just started blessing me and sewing into me. And I was able to go on like, I mean, you were there. I was, you were, you were like, you were like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> I just kept showing up and showing up because the Lord kept providing. And I finally surrendered uh, my finances to him. And I was like, and I started sowing and giving into other people and it was coming back. So there's just, I mean, there's multiple, multiple, multiple times when I got delivered in my life has been completely changed. Amen. Yeah. You know, I really, I really started following the Holy Spirit. Well, being led by the Holy Spirit when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was mm -hmm. 23. Isaiah is 25. You're 24? I'm 25. You're 25. Keegan's older than me. Oh, he is. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're both 25. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You guys, listen, you have already traveled to more nations than I have in my age, at your age. I mean, Y'all have been. To, I'm. I'm pretty sure. It's definitely Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah has already beat me in the travel thing. I'm talking not, not as going to as many places, but I'm just mean as like at the age. So this is this is the goal of any minister, guys. Just to let you know, is that your disciples that God has trusted you with that are really disciples of Jesus Christ. Let me make it sure because we don't want people saying crazy stuff. That we make disciples of Jesus Christ is that they exceed early on what you have already done. That's called pioneering. So even you guys, here's the goal, where I pioneer break ground, where you guys are already further ahead in age-wise, you pioneer the next wave, and they do even more. And then we have a greater effect in the kingdom. Mm. That's what it's called. And that's why you know, you guys see me breaking ground in all these areas and doing all these things that these guys will t they're pioneering with me in media actually both of them are 
So they see like everything we're always doing. I know that Keegan and Isaiah are always scared. I'm going to get a new idea. So they, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they wake up. They're like, is there a new idea? Okay. God, good gracious grace, you know, but that's the goal of any true minister is that they're not jealous. They're not insecure. They always want the best for the people that are around them. And it, here's, the, here's another thing. If you truly teach a supernatural and you truly teach everybody can operate in all nine gifts, of the Holy spirit, you don't get insecure because everybody's going to do what they're called to do. And everybody's working Amen. in the supernatural. Yeah. Like I, I'm comfortable knowing I do what I do. You do what you do or whoever is watching this, you do what you do. And we, the kingdom wins. It's a win for the kingdom, you know, mm -hmm. but they have figured out some spiritual principles that a lot of people didn't see in the beginning. Keegan, when he's going through deliverance, he was also traveling place to place. He wasn't waiting for, he wasn't like, Daniel Adams is going to pay for this. Daniel Adams is going to pay. No, he was like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to show up. I'm going to make make it known. They, so he would show up and show up and show up until he's gotten to where he is today. So it isn't like a special formula. It's just he would show up. He was there. And, um, you know, that that brings grace. So in Isaiah, you know, he would say yes. He just said yes. He didn't even know what he was doing. He was just like, yep, mm -hmm, yep. I'm like, come to California. You got a whole job. In I'm coming. He just <laughs> straight up yes, yes. And we're, and, and we're gone. You know, the, the, here, here's what I'm going to give you all the revelation now. And I'm going to give you guys watching the revelation too. They did exactly what Peter, James, John, Matthew, Bartholomew, Simon, Judas. You did what all of them did. Mm. You left everything. All I did was say, I said one word. I said, Come follow the one I follow. And that's why you're where you are today. I tested mm -hmm. you in the beginning. And I said, yes. you want to come? You want to come? We have another one that's actually coming down here at the recording this Sunday. Mm. He's even going to be blessed because he said yes. Amen. Mm. So everybody has the same opportunity. It's just everybody doesn't say yes. Jesus comes by. Hey, Peter, come out the boat. Peter could have been like, no, nah, I got to catch more fish. I got to stay. He said, hey, that voice, it sounds different. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving. I, I'm tired of this. I can't catch fish like Tom. He says, come with me. I'll make you fish of men. And then he jumps mm -hmm. out. He jumps out the boat wow. and he follows Jesus and he becomes the rock. Mm. The rock, the foundation, the apostle, Peter, that we read about to this day. Because wow. he said, yes. Ah, there's so much spiritual revelation in that. Yes. So that's a big key. Obedience. Even when it looks crazy. Like even Keegan just moved down from Indiana. He said, come on, man. Come to Florida. Yeah. You were just talking about It was about quick. That. No, but hold up, though. Like, it, was, it wasn't like I literally had two days. I packed up everything. My whole life, everything in two days. You're like, are you coming? And I was like, well. I was like, I, let's do this thing. And I got all the money that I had, every, everything that I had, and I was able to. You sold your truck too, didn't you? I sold my car. I sold I sold all everything uh, that was at. Uh, I had in a storage unit that I had, besides like a couple of things that I was able to bring by the grace of God. And I put literally the to the penny, I paid for a U-Haul to bring it down. Mm. Praise God, my dad let me borrow his truck. <laughs> and I, I came down. Wow. That was, and that was almost five months ago now. Crazy. If y'all don't, if y'all don't hear the grace in that, mm -hmm. now he's got an electric bike. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, e -bike. let's go. There, there's even something. There's something with that too. Right? We're gonna figure mm -hmm. out the whole yeah. story. There's a God's doing something. He's doing something. He's doing, doing something. something. Yeah, y'all gonna see Keegs here in Florida. <laughs> During bike week in Daytona, man, that man's gonna be hitting that. You gonna Isaiah, you're gonna be on your bike. He's gonna be on his bike. He's <laughs> 20 miles an hour. Mm. Isaiah's just, goes goes a lot faster than 20 miles an hour on his bike. Man, I mean, I, let me tell you. Man, I got I, Did, I, did I you go get delivered? We're talking about deliverance. You got delivered when you're on the bike with him? Oh yeah. Uh, From fear, right? He's man, I got <sighs> I was I was literally, I had my eyes closed. I was praying in tongue the whole way, the whole way. A, a, a I didn't stop. I didn't stop. 
apostle. Can we? Can we? Let's talk. You know how there's people that are like, and we talk. And shout out to um, Evangelist Malaya. You know how she was on the jet skis and she was like, "Oh, I'm so scared," but she really was. She was enjoying it. That's Keegan. Keegan's like, "Oh," and he's like, "We." He's like, "Oh, we." I, the whole time. That's what. That's the whole time. I'm, no. It's I'm an adrenaline junkie. Yeah, the truth comes out. I love out. adrenaline. Let it's it like out. it's like when oh I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you about? To say? He's about talking about getting shot. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. When you got shocked, yeah, yeah. Oh no, we no, no we hit. gonna just stop there because I could take that in a whole nother direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this crazy. is why you guys need to become a member, subscribe to the channel because we'll talk about that deeper. But. Yeah, yeah. There's, I just I I love adrenaline. I love like like that adrenaline rush, but it's still terrifying because you have two full grown men Shabbat. on a motorcycle, it's like six hundred pounds each, with deep. a big with. I had this big old. That was one rock, time. That was one time. Military backpack that had like we were because we because people had to saw go you. To, oh, oh yeah, we, we looked like a laughing stock. Yeah. People were laughing at us like crazy. The back yeah. like we're I'm like how is this bike holding us up right now? <laughs> Isaiah would barely turn. I would have loved to have a video of that for. for it could have gone for, viral. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, gone I'm viral. glad but we don't have it. Anyways, maybe talk we'll about freedom. Talk about mm-hmm. freedom. Just th- that that right there was a level of freedom. I got I got delivered from something worth being on that motorcycle. I don't know what it was. I I, I got yeah. delivered from fear riding the motorcycle. You know, the first time I rode the motorcycle, I rode it without glasses. Wow. And I didn't even realize that. Like, that's extremely dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hit with rocks. I rode through the whole neighborhood and I was like shaking. I was going like fast to the neighborhood and I didn't have no glasses on. And then someone tells me, hey, you need to wear glasses. And I'm like, oh. And then the one time, the one time I don't wear glasses one day, I think I had like took them off for a second or something because it got dark and I was wearing like shades. Something flies in my eye. And by the grace of God, I didn't lose my eye. But it was like. It's the only other time that that's something like that's ever happened. But I got delivered from fear on the bike too. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally almost got took out on a bike. When, yeah, on my Me motorcycle. Too. You rode a motorcycle? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this, this guy, someone get this man. <laughs> yeah. You was never no, no, in no. danger. No, I really was riding with my my old pastor, and I was behind him, and he took off, and I was new, fresh, like <laughs> like this man had me on a bike uh-huh. riding down I four. Jeez, worst road you could yeah. ever be on. Horrible. It's better now. All the way now. up to Daytona. Oh my goodness. Never I had not rode. That's a hike, man. I got and it. then it was raining. So I had never rode. You're a legend, man. I got it. You're and, a legend. And, and I'm telling you, I had moments where like it's over. I'm like, cause you know, he's going fast, they're having to wait for me. I get up to about 60, 70, and I'm scared. In the rain, you ride seventy in the rain. No, I went. I slowed down. I had to go under the bridge because it's summertime in Florida. It's rainy. It's like super rainy. It's tropical <laughs> weather. So, like, I was soaking wet. I would go Yo. home. I'd be soaking wet. <laughs> My feet, everything, just wet, wet, wet. And and I did. I I had a moment where I almost got took out on that bike, man. A car missed me by like like that much. Ke- Keegan, you're talking about dedication. Apostle talking about dedication with us, but like if. I just know because I've ridden, you know, mm-hmm. being fresh and then driving on that crazy, sketchy highway. And then on top of that, driving so far. Oh, he's different. And then and then the rain being involved, yeah. following your passion. Oh, that's that's yeah. some disciple stuff right there. That's and you're on a road, if you know I-4, mm-hmm. it has big divots in it. Mm-hmm. And you know the front tire that you have is mm-hmm. a smaller tire. Mm-hmm. You got it. You get caught in that divot. You might. You better flat. ride it out. Yeah. You can't shift it or nothing. Are uh-huh. you? Are you. You really might go out. Yeah. So like, talk about riding by faith. That's a legend move, my guy. That's I was. I was riding by faith, man. I've got some testimonies on that bike. That's a whole folklore right there. That's a whole. Story. And then I was riding without a helmet. I'd ride in shorts. I'd like you tank tops. I'd just be <laughs> out there, and I'd have other bikers. You know, they'd be. Throwing me the happy bird sometimes because uh-huh. I was crazy. They said, you stupid. Why you dress that way? I said, because I'm a rebel without a cause. You know, <laughs> I really was. I needed some freedom for sure. But yeah, yeah man, you know, we talking about deliverance, but this is relevant too because those moments wow. actually set you free from fear. And there's Amen. been a lot of deliverance moments on the motorcycle. 
Yeah. Oh Especially for Isaiah goodness. too. Oh, man, dude. Keegan is holding Keegan something. I, he 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 is. He's only been on the bike like twice, like three yeah. times. No, no, bags. no, no. I'm talking about you. Are you like talking about what yeah. you talking about with yeah, the shot? Talking about you, yeah. Talking, all right, we want to talk about it. Bring no, no, no. He, he wants, saying there's he wants to bring up moments. a very particular. No, no, we'll do that behind the scenes. That's behind the scenes. Yeah. Ah, you got to become a member. That's yeah. how you know you got to become a member if you want to hear that. Yeah, because there's some deep stuff. We're going to have some deep really talk. Deep stuff. There's stuff we got to be careful with here, but we'll do it behind the scenes for them for sure. But guys, this yeah. is Deliverance Testimonies, man. I just wanted to come on here on this podcast, share testimonies with you guys, and just show you that even the people you think are so great and anointed in the kingdom doing great things, they have testimonies of deliverance too. I'm able to do what I do in the kingdom because I'm a testimony of the things that I do. I'm a testimony of prophecy. I'm a testimony of evangelism. I'm a testimony of deliverance. I'm a testimony of salvation. I'm a testimony of God's glory. I'm a testimony of baptizing water, baptizing the Holy Spirit. I can give you what I have freely received, freely, I can freely give. So this is testimonies, guys. Please share some of your testimonies of deliverance in the comment section. We want to hear your story. We want to combat comment back to you. It'll either be me or Keegan, but it'll be in my name. We'll be commenting back to you guys. And uh, we want to just hear it. We want to say amen to those testimonies. And, you know, it helps somebody. You don't know if you comment in the comment section, somebody reads your testimony. And now they're getting set free because you were willing to share your testimony. Mm -hmm. So I pray you've been blessed. I pray freedom for everybody watching in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Guys, this has been episode eight of That Supernatural Talk. And I know it's only going to be better. But before we go... I'm going to pass it on to glory boy number two, Fido Kooks, Keegs Ice, right now, because he has some announcements for you. Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching episode eight of that Supernatural Talk podcast. I wanted just to give you guys an opportunity to sow where you grow, sow into what God is doing here uh, with the Supernatural Life, which you guys know is a online global movement across the whole entire world. So this podcast is fully funded by our viewers. So in the description below, you'll see a couple of links to go to our website on Buzzsprout to become a monthly supporter there. You guys can also join the channel, become a member, get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, member videos, uh, a community page, uh, access to to pick podcast discussions that we talk about. It's great, great stuff. So make sure you either become a member, make sure that you go to Buzzsprout. You guys can support us on there uh, for all that we do. So thank you guys so much. We love you guys. Thank you for being a part of that Supernatural Talk family. And uh, we will see you guys very, very soon. In Jesus' name. <laughs>